fellow resellers. This is episode number 95 of eBay the Right Way. Today's date is January 11th, 2023. My guest today is the lovely Kathleen in Pennsylvania, who is a diehard lover of all things nostalgic. Just one quick announcement. There has been a lot of discussion on the Facebook group about sellers not being able to find the global shipping program option on the sell your item form. So remember, the global shipping program is going away. eBay is combining the standard international shipping with the global shipping program, so it will be a little bit different, but um, no more global shipping program on its own. There is a link below this podcast to the official word from eBay, and this was announced in September of 2022. I was not able to find an exact date when this transition is going to be completed. Uh, So like all the other things that we transition to, such as the new listing form, managed payments, all those types of things, um, I think it's done in waves, so some sellers will see this option on the sell your item form for a while longer. Others don't see it anymore, so it's just impossible for eBay to make a transition like that um, and switch everybody over at the same exact time. So that is in process, but uh, no, you're not losing your mind if you're not seeing the global shipping option. Um, It may not be there anymore, and you can read that policy, the official word from eBay at the link below. Okay, now for the conversation with Kathleen. Hello, eBay sellers. Welcome back to another podcast. I have Kathleen with us today. And where are you located again? I'm, I live in Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Okay. And mm-hmm. it's about, oh, it's about an hour north of Philadelphia. Okay. That's our big city. Uh, Harleysville is a little town right off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. And no, we don't make Harleys here. You know, uh, <laughs> I, I've gotten that question uh, several times with eBay uh, customers. Oh, that's a cool name. But no, it's a little it was a little farming community and and mm-hmm. still is a little bit. So, yeah. OK. And do you have any snow? Not yet, but it's very cold here. Okay. Well, we are recording on December 20th. So yeah. Oh, yeah. are you thinking you might have a white Christmas? I don't think so from what they're saying, but they are saying we're going to have the coldest blast. I just heard the news, just heard the weather, coldest blast in 30 years. And it, it's, it sounds like you're even going to be a little cold from where you are, from what I'm Yeah, hearing. it's supposed yeah. to be a low of like 12 yeah. on Christmas Eve. So Yeah, whoa. Yeah, it can go either way. I remember yeah. last year in, I was actually in South Carolina for New Year's visiting okay. friends and mm-hmm. um, it was, it was 80 degrees. Yeah. And, just and how so about long. that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And you know what, even in Pennsylvania, a couple of years ago, we had, we had cocktails on Christmas day out on someone's deck. So you never know. You don't. But I mean, it, it, you know, I like it cold and I like and I would love to see some snow, but I don't I don't think that's going to come. OK, well, eventually it will. So it yeah. will. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, let's jump into talking about eBay. Um, first off is what brought you to eBay? When did you start? Well, I started eBay back when eBay started, I believe. I mean, I'm a member since 1997. And I just always loved um, nostalgia. I loved, uh, I love going to antique shops and that's basically all you had back then. Um, I don't even think the antique malls were a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to go in the little shops and I used to love that. 
Um, so boy, when eBay came on, I thought, oh boy, this is nice. You know, you get to see everything, you know, uh, it's just like a big antique center. That's how it was first described. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I sold a lot back then, but boy, I was on it a lot and I purchased a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's basically how I got started. Do you have a family history in antiques? No. Okay. Nope. Because sometimes nope. some of these interviews, it's like, oh yeah, I'm fourth generation junker. No. Um, no. no people don't. Uh, people don't understand what I do. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Oh my gosh. They, oh, yeah. you what? You sell junk? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> and then their next question is, why would anybody buy that? Exactly. Exactly. Like, well, I don't care. They just do. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny. My daughter gifted me a subscription to something called StoryWorth. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. You, mm -hmm. I'm basically writing a book. Uh, you get a question a week. You, set, you answer the question, you send it in, you can do pictures and it's about your life. And really it's a, um, and then they, they take all the questions and put them together and they make a book out of it and you can purchase more books. And so that's what, um, that's what I've been doing this whole year. And my, one of my recent questions was, um, did your life take you where you thought it would? And I wrote, what came to my mind first? I'm a teacher. And I said, yeah, I did all those things. I did what I went to school for and blah, blah, blah. And then I finished it. And then I thought, you know what? No, <laughs> I'm deleting the story. I'm going to tell my evening story because I never in my wildest dreams thought that I would be doing this after I retired. So I, I wrote about about what I do. And I said, yeah. And I said, I went from teaching to selling stuff on eBay. Some people look at that as junk. And then I took my screenshots of all my good sales that I've been posting on your site. And that's what I use for my pictures. So oh, good. my children will know that this is what their grandmother ended up doing in, in their retirement. <laughs> well, but it is a perfect segue from a real job teaching um i know a lot of people in healthcare mm -hmm. get into ebay yeah. either alongside with their job or when they retire and i think it keeps you sharp i yeah. mean it, it, you're not just wasting away wondering what you're going to do every day and it's so much fun yes that's why i do it yes that is the number one reason and I just, I just enjoy it. I really do. In fact, I'm getting to the point, Suzanne, where I have to say, I've got to back off because it's becoming full time and I'm not getting anything done that I thought I would get done in my retirement. <laughs> so this well, is a bit of a problem. Yeah. So I need to scale yeah, back a little bit, you know? It's because it's, it's unlimited. It's only limited by how much time you have in a day. Um, yeah. Getting things to sell is really not a problem for most people. Oh um, and mm -hmm. it's just, you know, getting it listed, getting your shipping done. And if you're like me, you'll have a good day of a lot of sales and then you're super motivated to list some more stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in the green right now. And things are selling like crazy as soon as I list them. And so I got to list more stuff because, you know, who knows when this wave will be and over. That is true, isn't it? The more you <laughs> list, the more you do sell. I, I've noticed that pattern. <laughs> yeah. How many items do you have listed? Oh, well, that's it. My store is about 1,100 items. And mm. I need to scale down because another reason, we are downsizing and we're going to be selling our home this year and moving to a smaller place maybe an apartment. We haven't made that decision yet. So I do, I have to start thinking of downsizing in many ways, not just the house, but, um, but even my eBay store, I thought, you know, and well, you, you're a pro on this because you've done it so many times. I listened to your podcast and 
I may be uh, calling you later on for more advice, you know, as to how to go about doing this, but it is, you know, so I, I, as much as I love to go out and shop and source, um, I, I have to keep, I, now I'm, I'm going to focus on my house and just getting rid of what I need to get rid of. Well, I'm proud of you. You get a gold star for that. <laughs> and, um, I don't really put this out there very much, but at this point, I don't care. I'm in an apartment. Yeah. And, uh-huh. You know, single, no kids, uh-huh. no pets. Right. Um, and I'm very mobile. So that's how this uh-huh. move to Greenville happened is yeah. in an apartment before. And I did a little apartment tour video, except I called it my home. I remember. Home. I remember that, that yeah. video. Yes, and people thought beautiful. it was a house. And it's like, I get some flack from family and stuff. Why don't you uh-huh. have a house? Why are you in an mm-hmm. apartment? You're better than that. And I'm like, um, hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the ancient Romans lived in apartments. This is yeah. not a new concept, but I just love the, um, I own my time. Yes. I yeah. don't have to worry about, oh, I got to replace the roof next year and oh, the water heater overflowed. And um, in fact, you know, my microwave wasn't working. One call yeah. to the front office, they brought me a new one in an hour. Yeah. And like, it's just the time I had. A, That's a very appealing. Mm-hmm. And it's just the time I don't even have to repairs and maintenance do not take up any space right. in my head. I don't have to think about any. And I, I never dreamed I would love apartment living so much, but mm-hmm. I yep. sold my big house back in 2015 and was, went to an apartment until I could figure it out. And it's like, oh, no yard work. No yard I work. Love, I love this. Right. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'm never going to own it, but I own my time right now. And right. that's, as you know, really important. So, And now the apartments, I mean, at least what's going up around here, and believe me, they are going fast. Um, their luxury apartments are beautiful. I mean, much better than what we have in our home right now, I can tell you that. I looked at the mm-hmm. bathroom. We just looked at one on Saturday. I looked at the bathrooms and I thought, well, this is double what I have here in my house, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're at that point in our life. We're not ready to go to that um, three-level nursing home thing yet. (laughs) And uh, we don't really want to buy. So I said, we we just decided this this is probably a good route for us. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's the other thing is what, um, in 2019, I was looking at buying a house. Mm-hmm. And then COVID happened and the housing market went crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And no. even apartment rents went up like crazy. Yes. It's yes. Just, I don't feel comfortable buying anything at this point still because yeah. yes. of the market. It really hasn't settled yet. Um, yeah. You know, all these people sold their homes and for incredible prices. Yes. And then they yeah. went to apartments and they didn't think about where they were going to go next. Like if you sold your house for so much money, then when you turn around and buy one, it's going to be an inflated price. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Even, even the storage unit buildings um, where everybody's putting their stuff. Oh yeah. I've heard their prices. Yes. Their prices and yeah. And availability. So I was, so no, I don't want to do a storage. I, I want to take what we need to take. Yes. And, you know, it's funny how you, be, you really do become a minimalist in your older age. <laughs> so the, those, I kid with my friends. I'm like, I'm going to open a storage facility and I'm going to call it Hotel California. Because you check in and you never leave. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And, That's you right. know, <laughs> I hear of people that, oh, we're on our third storage unit, you know, and they're uh, 70 years old. And I'm like, no. why don't you just get Mm-mm. rid of some of your stuff? Mm-mm. And then you don't have to store it. And it's just too overwhelming. Yeah, I couldn't live with that. I really couldn't. And I'm not a saver. However, I don't know if you had this problem in your many moves, but everything I pick up and I think, oh, well, I can sell that on eBay. You know, I'm not going to donate it. I can sell it on eBay and then suddenly I have another death pile going here. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, 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 it slows up that process. So I have to, I have to sort of get over that, that it is okay to donate. I don't have to sell everything. Yeah. I put my hand. And yeah. I went through my inventory this last move, September of 2022. 
Uh And every item I was like, do I want to bring this? Would I buy this today to resell? And I did donate maybe a hundred things. Okay. um, Okay. Because I wouldn't buy it again today. Didn't want to bring it. And, you know, I went to Goodwill like every day for two weeks to drop off stuff. Like, okay. Yeah. A day, a bag a day. And just, it was very freeing. To yes. Yes. Kind of do a reset. To let that go. And, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't, I got the receipt for donation, you know, so mm-hmm. uh, it, what I paid for the items wasn't significant. So it just was, you know, cost less to move because you have less stuff. Right. Right. You know, yeah. and it, it was very liberating to kind of do a reset. So mm-hmm. Isn't that the the truth though? That's, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. 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 You can always restock. Uh Uh-huh. And and my rule on personal things was, have I used this in two years? Okay. Yeah. That's good. If I need to buy it again, how cheap can I get it? Okay. Good. A lot of my um, kitchen stuff, I did not bring, you know, the heavy Pyrex glass baking dishes, Mm -hmm. grill dishes, and that stuff is heavy. Yeah. Um, you can pick that so, up in any thrift store. We know I, that. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. In fact, um, I kind of downsized my kitchen too much. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, I want to make this casserole. Wait, I don't even have a dish to make that in. So yeah. I have a list of things to look for at Goodwill because, yeah, you can find a nice baking dish for a dollar. Oh, my gosh. You know, yeah, yeah. It's easy yeah. to replenish. So that's the yeah. one we're in is, is those minimalist guys. I forget their names. They, they have a YouTube channel, but they're like, if you can replace it for $20 in 20 minutes or within 20 miles, you don't need it. Oh, okay. You know, you know when you're downsizing, think about when how, you're downsizing. If I need okay. this again, I can find it and it's okay. Right. So anyway, enough of that. But And um, you have said before, you know, our kids don't want our stuff and yeah. they don't. And I keep telling my children, I said, look. You know how I am with eBay. And if there's anything that you think you might want, just let me know and you can have it. Uh, they haven't let me know, so. <laughs> yeah. And-, and you know what? I don't blame them. I didn't want my mother's stuff when we got married. I didn't want it. <laughs> no. Yes, that nope. Victorian couch may have been no. your mother's, but I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. You know, donate it somewhere or let a bed and breakfast buy it or whatever. Um, exactly. They seem to be hurt that we don't want their stuff. Yeah. But, you know, everybody has different emotional yeah. attachments. So, yeah. yeah, you know, I I would just say, hey, I don't love it. Yeah. And I don't bring stuff into my sanctuary, a.k.a. my home, um, unless I love it. Yeah, right. You know? Right. So, Anyway, there's that speech, but um, okay. So let's talk about some things you have sold because you're always posting high dollar items. Yeah, well, I uh, not not a whole whole lot, but I, I had a good year, I think, with that. Um, probably one of the 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 best, well, my highest my highest sales happened when I wasn't planning on going shopping at all. In fact, I was with my friend, we were driving down, we're actually just going to the QVC outlet, which is a good place to source, by the way. Oh, you have any of them around you. Yeah, they do, they're they're pretty good. And that's where we're going. And I I passed a sign, I said, was that a yard sale sign? She said, I think so. And I said, you wanna go? And she said, yeah, let's go. So I did my U-turn and I, came around we came around at the sale and it wasn't a yard sale but it was a moving sale and it was the best kind ever because it was by the the family the lady had gone in the woman that lived there had gone into assisted living and they were getting rid of everything in her house this was the last day it was a Sunday afternoon and uh we went in there and I walked around and that is where I saw the Lennox, the Lennox uh, Spice Jar Village. Okay, yes. And I only noticed that because I had listened to your 
pot not well no it wasn't a podcast it was a, the, your your thing that you do every month you know a hundred dollars over a hundred dollars yes. yes yes and that popped and up then there were times. two of them there yes. were two of them in that and I would have walked right by that had I not just seen it but I looked and they had one out they were all boxed in original boxes they were brand new one was out and I thought gee I think that's the thing that they were just talking about they had fifty dollars on it and I said, well, and I didn't even have that much cash with me because we were planning on going to York City. So she said, I said, well, are you firm on that price? She goes, what do you want to pay for it? I said, well, would you take 20? She said, sold. So I took, I got it for $20 and went home that night and listed it and it sold for $400 um, within an hour. That so that was. It's a good one. Yeah. That same house, there was a room full of dolls, and I'm an ex doll collector. And I looked, and she said, "You know, someone was supposed to pick these up. They never did. So take what you want." So I took this one doll. I, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of get overwhelmed sometimes at, at these sales, you know, and I think I, I, I can only take so much. I took a couple of dolls. The one being a big baby doll, and. Uh, I just shoved her in the bag. And uh, so anyway, a, a couple of weeks later, I did some research on her and I found out that it was uh, from the 40s. And it was, um, and when I really looked at this doll, the only thing wrong with it was a dirty dress, a real dusty, dirty dress. Everything was perfect on this doll. Mm -hmm. So I just, so I saw that and I really didn't know how to, I didn't know what, where to, what to price her at. So I ended up putting it at auction. And I think I started at 99 or something, $99. And it sold for $450 in 10 days. So those two sales were from that one house that we were not planning on going to. <laughs> it was great. It was, it was absolutely a, a great thrifting day for me. That, and we that went down to the QVC day. outlet. Yeah. We went to the QVC outlet and they had a flash sale of all their bathing suits for $5. So I bought about 10 bathing suits to sell. And I don't usually even sell bathing suits, but I, you know, I know you're always saying they're a good thing to sell. And I've sold about three of them already. Okay. And it's, and it's uh, September, you know, this was in September, early September when we did this. So yeah, so I have, uh, so it, that was a great, a great day. And, you know, we, we weren't planning on it. So you just never know with this business. You really don't. Well, so I, I made, I made $850 at the, at the, at the moving sale. That was a that, good one. That, that keeps you doing eBay, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <laughs> but I love to hear that people find things that are in the videos or in the bowl oh, yeah. because uh, there's so much bad information about eBay out there. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I yeah. love to see that, okay, I put this video together from things other people have sold and somebody, and this happens all the time, and somebody's like, I found that thing later that day, or I found yep. that thing the next day. I had just watched your video. So it's like the stars have aligned. You know, you, you right. see the information and then there it is in front of you. And you and know what, Suzanne, you know what else helps? It's the the visual, you know. Uh, it's one thing listening and re or, or just listening and reading, yeah. But but when you can see the item, and that is and that's what I, I'm a visual learner. I know that, and oh my gosh, it does. It sticks with me like those spice jars. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, and that's true as far as when you see it, you remember it and you may not remember where you saw it. You just know that you did like, yes, I just saw that on something. Right. And yep. there's some kind of, um, I will look this up and put it at the end, but there is a word for that when you see something and then, or you learn about something and then immediately you start seeing it everywhere. Okay. Oh, um, okay. There's, there's a name for that, but, uh, that happens all the time is is now you're aware of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you may have you may have seen it before but you don't remember you you weren't mm -hmm. aware that it was worth anything so you just didn't 
pay any attention to it and you just moved on. So I wonder every day, like how many things have I just walked by? Oh yeah. Yeah. I find out are valuable later. It's like, uh, right. I don't, I don't want to try to think about that, but I'm, I'm sure it's just thousands of things that, cause you didn't which, know. Which is what brings us to those thrift stores all the time. <laughs> Yeah, that's why like, I go in there, you know, like the, the Bolo books, it's like a treasure hunt. It's like a scavenger. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. didn't intend it to be like that. It was just, I love the Bolo books. Oh, well, thank I you. love them. It's Absolutely. just, here's a visual. Yes. Here's how much it can sell for. Mm-hmm. Here's how many sold in the past year. And so you can get that in your brain and remember it. Um, right. Because yes. that's unlike you. I, I have to see something. Right. Yeah. To remember it better than if I just heard it. Mm-hmm. So, now let's talk about your school teaching career. What did you teach? I taught elementary. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last 10 years, I taught fourth grade. And before that, it was second grade. It was third grade. It was fifth grade. Um, I, I taught them all. And, uh, you know, and I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, you know, uh, I taught for 30, 32 years. So it was a long time. And then I, um, it was time to retire. And uh, then they, then they, I, I ended up staying five more years, kind of as an in-house tutor. Mm-hmm. And I was getting up every day and going to work for four hours instead of a full day. But I was still getting up every day and going in, into school. So then the pandemic hit. And then that is when I made the decision. No, uh, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm done. And I haven't looked back. I'm glad it, you know, it was nice. It was a, it was a nice career. I enjoyed it. But um, the last five years of my teaching, um, I really got into the eBay a little bit. You know, I, I, that's when I was really, you know, Hey, I can make some money on this. And I, and that was starting. And then I, I'd go out if I had a day off, my, my friend and I would go out to Lancaster, which is a great place to source. They have wonderful thrift shops out there. And, uh, I come home and I couldn't wait to list. And then I thought, oh gosh, I have a whole set of papers to grade. I can't do this tonight. Mm -hmm. So when, when the teaching career ended, that's when I, I just loved, I just enjoyed the getting into the eBay because that's what I really enjoyed doing at that time. So it sounds like you didn't have any problem transitioning from full, fully employed at a quote regular job right. to retirement and um, fully employed at, e- at eBay because <laughs> that's what I feel like. But that's okay. I, I enjoy it so much. I'm one that has to be busy all the time. Yeah. I'm not one that can sit around and, you know, just read a book or something. No. Can I ask what year you were born? Uh, I'm 51. So I'm 71. Oh, so you were born in 51. Okay. Born in 51. And I, I love what the baby boomers are doing with their retirement. So you're yep. in that group. Full-fledged um, baby boomer. Just you know, not sitting around doing nothing, um, being busy, but not just busy work, doing something you love that Mm -hmm. keeps you busy. And I know I say this all the time, but I want to get the word out because, um, that that's one of the problems with older people, especially in retirement is they lose their sense of purpose and they don't feel like they have anything Mm -hmm interesting or worthy to do um but this is just it fits so many lifestyles it's whatever you want to make it it's however much you want to work on it that's and the beauty fun. of it right? yeah it is yeah yeah and I you know as I said it's more full-time right now but I can scale I know I can scale back and and still continue I may not sell as much but that's okay. You know, uh, I'm, I'm doing it. You know, I once heard that, you know, find a hobby and then figure out a way to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I I've done. You know, I feel like it's a hobby. You know, I always said that about eBay, Mm -hmm. boy, I'm getting paid and that's great. We just, we just put a roof on our house. eBay paid for it. 
you know, and, and it's just so nice to be able to say that, you know, that I can, we don't have to dip into any other funds that that's, that's what we just, that's what, how, how we did it. And I'm hoping that we're going to have some fun things to do when my husband retires. So um, I want to ask this question because I'm asked this a lot and um, obviously you report your eBay income. Yes. Yes. And so there, there are a lot of people in your age group that, or I guess all age groups, they're like, oh, I don't want to do eBay because you have to pay taxes on that money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, so would you rather have, I don't know, 80% of something than 0% of something? Yeah. And it really is something you need to talk to your tax person about because it's about your whole financial picture. It's, mm -hmm. it's about how, what, um, home office deductions are you taking and what other income streams do you have? And it's not just like all of a sudden you're going to owe all this money in taxes. And it, that fear keeps people from doing this. Mm -hmm. And I have a hard time convincing them that, um, it, this is not going to hurt you. This is, yeah. this is, yeah. you're still going to make more money. You yeah. know, even if you make a yeah. hundred dollars a month, yeah. that's still more yeah. than you had not doing it. Exactly. So, um, exactly. Can you speak to that point? Oh, I'm not a numbers person. <laughs> well, meaning meaning that you report your income, yeah, but yeah. you still oh, walk yeah. away with more than you have. Oh, yes. Yes. I have my own little eBay bank account and I love it. I just love it. Just being able to say that, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And we've, we've done, you know, I, as I said, I, I, I'm hoping that we can do a nice trip someday with mm -hmm. the money, you know, and it is, it's, it's, it's separate and uh, yeah, we have to pay taxes on it and, you know, but that's, that's life. Who likes to pay taxes? None of us do, but you know, <laughs> do you have yeah, a tax you're still a lot. Do you Yeah. Have... My husband, my husband. Oh, he doesn't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's, it's all about the complete picture. And mm -hmm. I just feel like so many people are slamming the door on this opportunity because of fear. They're afraid yeah. of what they're going to owe. And, but if, if you report your income and you do all the home office deductions, you may come out yeah. ahead. Yeah. I don't know if, we're, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know if, if that's the case, but my husband has always done our taxes. He's an attorney and he oh. does, all, he even does it for, a, he does them for clients. But we have a friend who is a CPA and uh, I was talking to him just recently and he said, I will never, ever question resellers after what I have seen. You know, he said, I can't, can't believe what you can make. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, and he and, and he said, no, and he says, it's a great, it's a great thing to get into. So well, and I, I don't think people understand the value of the home office deductions yeah as you get to write off part of your cell phone bill and a percentage of your utilities for whatever space you're using and your mileage to and from yeah. anything that has to do with yeah. your business and yeah. you can do like some meals and you yeah. can do um all kind of things that benefit you in your whole life not just your ebay business so you know, yeah. you have to have both sides of it. And, you know, there's plenty of resellers that don't report anything. Yeah. And that's their business. But then when you're trying to prove your income, you don't have that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's uh, yeah. my service announcement on that. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it is, it's a, it's just a great thing. It really is. Well, what are some other things you've sold that were high dollars? Uh, you know things? what I sold and it was one of your thumbnails on your, um, your uh, $100 mm -hmm. uh, videos, the wedding gown that went to a yes. museum. Do you remember that? I do. Tell that yeah. story. And that was, a, that was just a real exciting thing because it belonged to my friend who was cleaning out and um she and and she said i'm going to donate this to the um to a, one of the local thrift shops and i said and it was preserved and mm -hmm. so i knew it would not have to be it would show nice so i uh i said to her i'd love a challenge and i had no clue 
what the, this would go. I said, let me try it. Let me try it. And we did. We, we uh, opened it up and had our fingers crossed because I've heard some horror stories about preserved wedding gowns that were never preserved. Mm -hmm. Really, the idea of preserving your wedding gown is to not open it, you know? Right. How do you know if it really is what it should be? Well, it turned out it, this she was married in 1967. And it was a beautiful wedding gown. And she had a little picture of herself with it, which I did post on that. So that was nice. And it, and um, I and then she had a wedding veil that went with it. And I, when I listed them, I split them up. I put the veil separate because the veil, I figure the gown might not sell. I mean, I didn't think it would. Uh, and I think I did them both at auction because I had no clue how to price them, even with researching. But the veil was a beautiful uh, pillbox hat with like a Jackie Kennedy pillbox hat with the, the short veil that went down. I thought that's going to sell. And it didn't. But I did during that time when it was listed, I got an email from or a, a message through uh, through eBay from a woman who said she was going to bid on my things. But then when she saw that I split them up, she was very upset. He said, you never split something like this up. And I, I thought, I don't know. I just thought, and I explained to her, I thought I would, I really wanted to make some money for my friend. Mm -hmm. So as it turned out, um, neither one of them sold. And she did say to me, if you ever list them again and put them together, uh, I might be interested. So I did that. I took her advice. I put them together. I listed them. And sure enough, she bought them. $179 for the two. And that, that was, that was a lot. My friend really needed the money and I was thrilled that I was able to help her out financially. But the lady did explain to me, she said, I have a wedding. I have a museum. I, I'm start, I'm starting a museum and this is where I want to put it. The only thing I ask is that I have her name. And she said, a first name is fine. And also maybe a little story that goes with it. So I said, you know, I talked to my friend. She says, oh yeah, you can just give her my name, my first name, that's fine. And I said, this was worn by someone from um, a little coal mine in, in Pennsylvania in 1967. So it was, you know, that's all she wanted. Now where that ever went, I don't know. I still have her her name and I would like to look her up and ask if she ever developed this museum. She was from California. So I thought, what a great way to rehome something, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just looked up on YouTube that thumbnail. It was a black and white photo of yes. yeah. the, the lady wearing the dress and that was yeah. September of 2021. Yeah. So if anybody wants to look that up, just go to my YouTube and it's yeah. under the hundred dollar sales playlist. Yeah. The picture. So yeah. yeah I, I definitely remember that. Um, yeah. That was a fun one because I had no clue what I was, I, you know, and just un, unboxing that and, and, you know, getting the, we had to put it on the, my clothes line to get pictures of the whole thing. And then, mm -hmm. but it was so good to have the original picture of her in it you know so yeah, perfect that was a that was a fun that was a that was a fun sale it really was yeah well and it sounds like you have a passion for rehoming I do I do that's why I really enjoy you know when you can pick something up and and know that it's going to go somewhere I collected a lot of my childhood I mean I have a lot of my childhood dolls and I I'm slowly getting rid of all of them Mm -hmm. uh, and I do have one that is the Patty Play Pal. I don't know if you know her. It's kind of a joke in my family. My grandchildren think she's the creepiest thing going, but it's a it's a 36 inch doll. Um, and uh, they just hate her, you know. And I, I really, <laughs> I really want this doll to go to someone. And there's there's groups out there. There's many, you know. I I I know how to, you know. I can sell it on eBay, or I can go to this private group and. I just want it to go to some place where it's going to be, you know, loved. <laughs> well, and I think 
that is a wonderful perspective because you said you're in your seventies yeah, and right? so your kids aren't going to want it. They're yeah. not going to take oh, no. any time to find an owner who will love it. Only right? you can do that. Yeah. The and kids don't even like, like it. I mean, like, you know, yeah, you, you just know. You're kind of um, getting all of your physical items settled. Like where right. are they going to go when I'm not here anymore? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because you don't want them to get just thrown out or donated or well, you know. we and we see this when we go to thrift shops when we go to the goodwill bins or wherever we go i mean there's someone's china you know or or pictures from a trip to italy or you know i i've seen it all and i thought oh my gosh you know i'm i'm making sure my stuff goes where it should go so you're on a mission i am <laughs> Okay, well, you said you have 1,100 items at this yes. time, and what would you say you focus on the most? Mostly vintage collectibles, mm-hmm. hard goods. So what's the craziest thing you've ever shipped? Oh, gosh, the craziest thing I ever shipped. Hmm. Um probably you know i just shipped something last night i wouldn't say it's crazy but i had to put three no i had to put two shoe size priority boxes together mm-hmm. to to do it and it was a um it was something very long and narrow uh you know but i i can't think of anything else that was you know really well, that the Linux spice jars how many jars were in that set oh there were 24 and that yeah, was yeah. but they were all individually boxed in styrofoam the problem with that one was it was taking them all out and photographing them oh and, i didn't realize um, they came with the packaging that they came with yeah. all the packaging i had to open every one but uh so that they once i did that uh i just put them in one big box you know um, you know, I think it's a challenge if you, you know, I've already gotten um, a sale from somebody that bought 10 things from my store and finding, the, you know, get packaging all that. That was hard. I'll tell you the shipping. I- I'm still learning shipping. You know, mm-hmm. um, I had a funny, yeah, it's funny. Our, our call is today because I just got an email. I sent a quilt out on October 31st, it was Halloween, and it's just arriving in Alabama today. Oh, you're kidding. And it was stuck in the distributing center in Jersey City for months. And what was really stupid on my part, I, and that you feel, I, I, I had that in my, um, on, on my Money Making Monday picture of it. It's a beautiful handmade quilt. I sent it parcel select, not realizing you don't get insurance. I mean, I would have had it insured. So the shipping, you know, for those out there that that have a problem with that, you know, go to go to Suzanne's library. She's got a great (laughs) great thing on shipping. I don't I don't recall if you ever said anything about parcel select and not not being, you know, able to have insurance, but you know, uh, it, it's a challenge. It really is. And as I said, I'm still learning, still learning, you know. I think I okay. have talked about Parcel Select in that regard. Yeah. And here's the thing is I offer it because you get a bump in search if you have two yes. shipping options. So I remember I that. I have it on all of them. But if yeah. they choose Parcel Select, I automatically choose priority. Like, there's really not much of a price difference most no. of the time. No, there isn't. No. And then the other problem with priority is you do get that $100 of insurance. But right. over the past couple of years, the post office has gotten really cranky about oh. insurance claims. Like yes. they, the buyer says it arrives broken. They send pictures, mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. And you go to file a claim online and then it says we need photographs of the item. Yes. Well, how the buyer bring the broken item yeah. to the post office. That's Who's not going to happen. That? The buyer's already mad at you. You like, know, they're, they're already upset. It's on yeah, you, not... not them. Yeah. So insurance I'll purchase through yeah. 
a different source or do a pirate ship or something like that where the claim will be honored because now the post office is not honoring those claims. So what point, what's the point of shipping priority if you're not getting right. the insurance claim honored? Right. So it's very frustrating. What, and Suzanne, can I ask what and for the people out there too that might what what um what do you use? What what shipping well, place? Do most you? of the time my stuff is first class. <laughs> so, so is mine. So is so mine. It's not really even priority, but um I do um if it's breakable, like I do I use the padded flat rates a lot because yeah. heavier clothing fits in there well. And even shoes, if they're flat like yeah. hot heels right or sandals or yeah right mm -hmm. but if it's something else breakable I will add extra insurance when you go to print your label you can mm -hmm. do that pull down and you can add ship saver ship insurance whatever they're called now oh okay and all right on there or if you do pirate ship that's an option uh, because the Pirate ship is insuring it, not USPS. Okay. And they're so pretty good to deal with. I've never I dealt have, with I, I mean, have I have filed, used pirate ship. Yeah, I've had to file a couple of claims through there, but it's I only do that if it's breakable. Yeah. I don't do it on every item because it might cost a dollar, but yeah. that's worth it to me. And no, I don't put that on a handling charge. I just eat that cost. Okay. Good. Um, because it's that's sort of um, you know, nitpicky like. Well, this quilt, I, I, you know, it, it, it went into, pro I don't even remember what I put it in, to be honest with you, probably a big, a big um, poly mailer, which is how I would chip something like that. Uh, but, you know, I, I got, I couldn't even file a claim because you don't get insurance. So that was it. Yeah. And, and um, Parcel Select, know. it just, it's the stepchild of shipping. Like it gets no attention. <laughs> yeah, okay. Kind of, yeah. Um, All if right. it's stuck somewhere, oh, well, one day yeah. it'll, it'll reappear. And well, it did reappear and it was, be, it's being delivered today, supposedly. Uh, so she, I did refund her money. Um, and she, she opened up a case and, and we've been, we've been communicating the whole time. She wants the quilt. Uh -huh. So I know I, and, I was just out the, it was $82. I was out that money. And now I'll, I'll probably, I have to go through eBay and get it to get the money back. But right. I guess the point here is, you know, uh, chipping is, it's just an ongoing education. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've been doing this for many years and I'm still learning. So don't get discouraged with it, but I thought I had it all down pat. Well, guess what? I didn't. <laughs> well, but there's so many videos on YouTube now, how to ship Fill in exactly the yeah. oh my god it, well it, with everything with everything yeah with everything it's it's just wonderful you know youtube is just a wealth of information i mean there's a lot of junk out there too but but there's well and last there's a lot night, of good stuff I, I fixed my dishwasher using a youtube video yep. i, was I like, believe it yeah it, it was clogged up you know and in these uh -huh. apartments they don't put in super high-end appliances but uh, there's a cylindrical filter you can unscrew and pull out and clean out that filter. Okay. Um, and that was the problem. It's very easy. Yeah. And I don't think it had ever been cleaned out, but I did that. And you fixed and it. And I did ran it feel the, good I after that. And, and it worked. It was, there wasn't water collecting yeah. in the bottom or anything. And I was like, look at me fixing the dishwasher. Awesome. Tom Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's how I found you. It was just on, you know, searching eBay um, on, on YouTube. And, um, you know, you know, you learn very quickly um, who's good and who's not. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew you were good. And that's why I thought, oh, I'm going to join this premium library and I'm going to I'm going to uh, learn everything I can. And it was just so informative. It really was. So that was, I thank you for that because um, it's been a, you know, you've been a, a big help. And when I got that question, you know, oh, can you sell this for me? Or no, I can't. I love that video because I, I used <laughs> what you said. Well, that means you know? a lot coming from a teacher. 
because I'm not technically a teacher, but I kind of uh, end up being no, a teacher. No, you're a very good teacher. Um, very good. So what would you say is your favorite part of the premium library? What What do you look forward to? I, well, I'm not a member anymore because I, I think I was for about eight or nine months, but I think I have to come back in because uh, I know you've put a lot more into it since I, I went out, but I just love the individual uh, videos on, you know, like the one on Yankee Candles. I mean, that was so, that was interesting, you know, um, things that, you know, I wouldn't think of, of buying, you know, when I'm out there and, uh, you know, it was, it was very good. I just love those, you know, and then just the, the general eBay background that you have to have when you go to sell, mm -hmm. you know, well, I appreciate that. And you're right. I do add stuff every week, but I designed it for people to come and go because. Yeah, right. And you know, that's life great. happens. <laughs> and that's what I tell people, you know, it, it's $20 a month. If you think about that in terms of a course, that's very cheap, you know, and, well, what you and I've never raised the price. Oh, good. And well, that's great. <laughs> I don't plan to, because if you look at anything out there, Amazon Prime, Netflix, yeah. any subscription, you get that email, we're raising the price $4 uh -huh. yeah. and, you yeah. know, whatever it is. And I, uh -huh. I just, I'm like, I've been your customer forever and you're doing that to me. And I'm just uh -huh. not doing that to yeah. my students. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. $20 a month for what you get and the knowledge you get to make more money. I feel exactly. that exactly fair. So, um, and, and people can take your course and become a seller. You can become it. We all know you can become a seller without taking the course, but it just makes it a lot easier, you know, hearing it from somebody. And well, I like that. I like to consume information that um, like somebody's already put all this together for me. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to figure it out. It's like a recipe. I want to look up a recipe for lasagna. I don't have to figure that out. Somebody right. already done it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, when you can find that, it's great. Um, yeah, well, we've been going almost an hour here, all over the place, and <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. yeah my last question we, is <laughs> always, what do you recommend? What's your advice for people getting into this now? I guess my my first bit of advice is to buy low if you're going to buy, but start around the house. You know, uh, I think we all have a wealth of of stuff in our house that we don't use. And it's a good way to get into it when you know you're not putting any money into it. Mm -hmm. But if you do go out sourcing, buy low. I mean, I, I usually don't pay more than five dollars for an item that's mm -hmm. going I'm I'm buying up if I go over five dollars. Yeah, um, I think you're you right. Know. You make your money when you buy. And yeah, and uh and just stay educated. That that's the most important thing, I think. You know, be patient. Uh, it doesn't come overnight, but it, you know, uh, use use the resources out there. We we said that um, in our talk. Uh, YouTube is a wealth of information, mm -hmm. um, and you know it. You know it. You know the good stuff out there. You know, and you know the bad stuff. So. Uh, that's, that's my advice is, is especially with the shipping. I mean, that, that's, that's something that is, is huge, you know, to get, I think that, that threatens a lot of people. Well, and that's, that's something that can trip up anybody if you've never yes. sold that kind of item before, mm -hmm. but right. you just have to tell yourself, okay, there's a way to do this. There's probably mm -hmm. more than one way. And mm -hmm. I just need to figure that out and yeah. everything can be figured out. You've got groups you can ask people you can look up youtube videos um you can figure it out nothing nothing is really like unshippable you just have to right. figure out the best way to do it so that it gets there intact and there's no mm -hmm. problems i just shipped a um a leg lamp are oh, you really? familiar are you yes. familiar with with the, the christmas story uh, yeah christmas story leg lamp right well, I had a small one. We have one on our, we have a bar downstairs and we have a, we have a small one there and the, the light on the leg went out. And then I bought another one at a thrift shop, a little one. And I had this, uh, this broken one. I 
had it, uh, you know, in a bag to donate. And I thought, no, that probably will sell. So that I did. I sold it for $35. And um, my husband said, why don't you just put fragile all over it? You know, <laughs> you know, the fragile from the, the movie, you know. Yeah, but that's an indication for the post office to see if they can break it. That's what I told them. I said, no, you can't do that. <laughs> can't do that. They throw it around. So, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, that's that was that's, I actually found the real big, big leg lamp, the one that goes for over a hundred dollars at a goodwill. And I got it for ten dollars and I put it on the counter and I said to the guy, I got the major award. If you remember the movie, that was the joke, you know, I got uh -huh. it's the major award. And the guy looked at me like I had two heads. I clearly he had not seen the movie. So <laughs> Right. But anyway, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, that was, you know, that's a challenge. I, I, that was a chipping challenge to even chip in the little one, you know, the, the, um, the lamp, the shade had to be really protected, you know? Right. So, yeah, but anyway, yep. Okay. But yep. Stay educated. That's it. You know, we can, we, we can learn all the time. Thank you I thank for you. taking time out of your day to chat and oh. it was great to finally meet you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so and thank you this? for everything you do for all the resellers because you you do offer great information. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That is success for me. I love the <laughs> monthly things that you do and I love the podcasts. Okay. The podcasts great. are great. They really are. Yeah, that's it's so much easier to make than oh, YouTube. are they? Yeah, <laughs> and bet. to listen to anywhere doing anything. Yeah. So I I love it. That's and my... I'm sorry I don't comment a lot because I, I'm in my car a lot when I do when I listen to them and that's you know. Well, I don't think you yeah. can comment on a podcast unless oh, you're watching you it okay. on on YouTube like later. Okay, uh, that's the thing with podcasts is there's no way to comment. Which can oh, be okay. actually be good. Okay. <laughs> because, <Yeah. laughs> you know, trolls. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, thanks again. And we will see you on the Facebook group. Okay, Suzanne. Thanks for having me. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye-bye. And thank you again, Kathleen, for coming on the podcast. You are just a wealth of information. Now, I want to throw one thing out there. <laughs> um, I did provide an open invitation for sellers to contact me to discuss coming on the podcast. And I have reached out to um, other sellers who decline because they feel like they are not a perfect public speaker. Well, let me tell you about the magic of editing. <laughs> um I edit all the podcasts. The finished product sounds nothing like the raw interview that uh, you and I would do. So if you think that um, everyone who's been on the podcast is a polished public speaker, uh, that is an incorrect assumption. Editing can do a lot. And um, I'm very meticulous. I like to create a high quality product no matter what it is. So if that's what's stopping you from coming on this podcast, um, I just want to put your anxiety at ease that um, there's a lot of work on the back end. And it usually takes about twice as long as the actual interview to edit everything. So um, don't worry about not sounding perfect. In fact, during most of these interviews, I forget what I'm going to say. I got too many things going through my head. I forget what I'm going to say, or I say the wrong thing. And that's where the magic of editing comes in because nobody has to know. Okay, today's trivia question. We talked about the phenomenon where you learn something new and then suddenly see it everywhere. What is this called? Here are a few seconds to think about it. OK, 
Okay, this is called the bader meinhof phenomenon. Let me spell that for you. B-A-A-D-E-R dash M-E-I-N-H-O-F. And it refers to the false impression that something happens more frequently than it actually does. This often occurs when we learn something new. Suddenly, this new thing seems to appear more frequently when in reality, it's only our awareness of it that has increased. So this happens to everybody. As soon as you learn something new, all of a sudden, there it is everywhere. So now you know the name for that, the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon. So yes, this is a real thing. Okay, next week, my guest is Leilani, mom of 10 children, and she has traveled the world as a missionary. She is just delightful and has had a very interesting life, and you will love her. Thank you again for tuning in to this podcast, and I will talk to you next week. Bye for now.